Last video for part eight. If we can do a hypothesis test, we can do a confidence interval, right? This just gives us a different way to look at it instead of testing whether the means, uh, that the difference, the average difference is different than zero, we could actually say, well, what is the average difference between a man and a woman and uh, when, they, when they're married? And so in this case, uh, we're looking at a table of college students from September to April and their freshman year looking at their weight. So we're trying to see how much difference is there in their weights between September and uh, April. Is there really a truly a freshman 15? So um, they start in April and they, uh, they start in September, they end in April. So this student actually lost a pound. This student also lost a pound. This student gained four, lost two, gained one. So right now, not looking like there's a big difference between um, September to April weights. I mean, the, the biggest difference we saw was four pounds. Um, we saw people above, people below. So we would go ahead and say, okay, if, we were, if we're testing hypothesis, what we would be testing is the difference in weights zero. We don't have a direction that we may be inclined to be thinking about that freshman 15 myth or whatever, the idea that you might gain weight when you're in college with dorm food, especially if you're living uh, on campus. But since there's no direction mentioned, this would be what we think about in a hypothesis test. But in this case, we want to create a confidence interval. And it makes a little more sense in this context to me than it does in the previous one in, in the 8.2 setting. So if we want to make a confidence interval for the mean, the average change in weight, this is something people would want to know. How much can I expect to see my weight change uh, when I'm in college from September to April that first year. So we would use the confidence interval above, which is essentially the same interval we've seen before, x bar plus or minus t star s over the squared of n, all that good stuff. So we do need an x bar, a t star, an s, all that stuff. So I'll go ahead and just do this one by hand instead of using stat crunch, uh, just because I have to go find all the information. So we need all of our data for how much people actually gained or lost, I guess, between September and April. So we have a negative one, a negative one, a four, a negative two, and a positive one. And if we wanted to, we could do our one bar stats on this, we find that our X bar is equal to 0.2. So the average amount that people gain between this is 0.2 pounds, not a whole lot at all. And our standard deviation, 2.2. 3875, 2.3875, and we know our n was equal to 5. We had 5 people in the sample. So if we wanted to actually use the formula, why the heck not? We'll start with our 0.2, plus or minus our uh, margin of error. In order to get this, we do need a t star, but this is just a one sample test because this is the only thing we're looking at, this one sample of these differences. So it's just 5 minus 1, same as our same old t interval. So we want a 95% with a degree of freedom of 4. Ugh, I closed my t interval, uh, my t paper. So hold on a second, I'm just going to look this up on a table in my office. Oops, dropping things. <laughs> um, so degree of freedom 4. Like literally just threw a whole bunch of stuff on the ground. Um, and what do we have here? Degree of freedom four. Super distracted. And we want 95% confidence in it all. All right. So 2.776. Recovering from dropping things on my head. Um, and then we have our S 2.3875 divided by the square root of N. So we got our margin of error in red and our point estimate. So 2.77, I hate when this happens, let's reboot my computer. 776 times 2.3875 divided by the square root of five. So we're gonna add and subtract 2.964. Now, if we do that, we're going to end up with a negative 2.7640 to a 3.9640.
So if I wanted to write a statement about this, I would say that I am 95% confident that in your freshman year from September to April, your change in weight will be somewhere between negative 2.7 pounds to positive 3.96 pounds. So you're either going to lose three pounds or you're going to gain four pounds, which means we don't have a whole lot of information. So if we were thinking about the, the corresponding hypothesis test, uh, we definitely could not reject the null. It is possible that you would have no difference in your weight.